What's up guys? Welcome to the 15th BioLang video log and uh, I expect this one will probably be my biggest one especially after uh, the first metabolic damage video uh, kind of went viral. Um, first I want to give you a little bit of background on that video I did. Uh, when I did metabolic damage, uh, when I started the video I was angry. <laughs> I did that video because I was mad. Um, I had just gotten an email from a, uh, a future client, uh, was a potential client at the time, and they were doing the whole. They had a coach who had them on, you know, six eight hundred calories, something like that a day, two hours of cardio, and that person couldn't drop any more weight. I mean, they were just they were just bombed out completely. And then that person's coach chose to dump them six weeks out from a show because they didn't want to be associated with that, that person who wasn't going to place well. And uh, I was just quite frankly sick of it. Um, I'm sick of these awful, awful coaches who have no business prepping these people, uh, destroying people's metabolisms. And some of them are the biggest name coaches out there. Um, so I decided to turn the lights on and then watch the cockroaches scurry for cover, uh, which is exactly what's happening. Uh, the first week after I made that video, uh, I'm not kidding, I had over 500 emails, uh, mostly from women, uh, telling me, oh my god, thank you for making that video. I thought it was just me, I thought there was something wrong with me that it wasn't happening to anybody else and you know this video has given me hope or this information has given me hope and um, they had to start asking uh, some of their coaches hey well I'm experiencing this why why did you do this to me and uh, so a lot of the coaches weren't very happy about that and I've actually seen you know the cockroaches scurry for cover uh, trying to cover their ass which is you know consisted of I saw one video of an idiot talking about how uh, you couldn't possibly have this happen if, unless people were on drugs. Uh, they've shown caloric restriction over a prolonged period of time with too much exercise will reduce, drastically reduce metabolic rate, irregardless of drugs. Uh, this is another example of somebody trying to cover their own ass. Um, and of course there have been coaches that have come out and tried to take advantage of this situation by saying, oh yeah, come work with me, I can, I can fix your problem. But, but don't worry, we can still get you ready for a show while we're doing it. Ridiculous. You cannot fix this issue uh, by further caloric restriction, by further dieting and more cardio. It's not going to change it. Um, so what really inspired this video was I, I just got done with a two and a half week tour of Australia and every time I started one of the most popular topics in my seminars and training camps was metabolic damage and metabolic adaptation and whenever I'd start talking about it I would see we had seminars with 60, 70, 80 people in them and I would start seeing this all throughout the auditorium people just like um, in amazement if they'd never heard of it. Uh, I had one gal, I, I actually stopped kind of the speech I was giving because I noticed she said something to her boyfriend and they both started laughing out loud. I was giving an example of somebody of a case of metabolic damage, just like a theoretical example. And for those who don't know, I define uh, metabolic damage as essentially lack of weight loss that is not predicted by the amount of caloric restriction and activity somebody's doing. So I was talking about somebody who was eating 1100 calories a day, uh, you know, eating a, less than you know, 80 grams of carbs per day, less than 30 grams of fat, doing two hours of, car of low intensity cardio per day, and, and having trouble dropping weight. That is something I would consider metabolic damage. That their, their weight loss is not predicted by their caloric input and their, their uh, cardio output, okay? Um, or it's a disproportionate amount of weight gain compared to the caloric input. So if somebody's eating 1400 calories per day and gaining weight, um, I would consider that metabolic damage, something like that. Um, well, this, this gal kind of said something to her boyfriend when I was giving that example and, and they both started chuckling. And I asked, I said, well, what was so funny? 
and she said, you just described me down to the grams of food I was eating, down to the amount of cardio I was doing, everything. It's like you, you know, had a camera and were watching me. And it's because I've seen this stuff so many times. Uh, probably since that, vi that first metabolic damage video went up, I've had over a thousand emails, easily, from people asking about this sort of thing. And so I've just seen what's going on and seen how much of it was in Australia. I never knew. I didn't realize how many people are, are, are dealing with this, uh, especially the women competitors and, and especially the ones that have dealt with coaches in the big fitness factories, you know, the ones with hundreds and hundreds of clients who just churn them out over and over and send out the same cookie cutter diets. Um, can, you, can you tell I'm a little bit agitated right now? Um, they just churn right through these girls and screw up their metabolisms and you see them go out and they do well and they fall off the face of the earth because their metabolisms are screwed. They, they, they can't get back on track. Um, so we're starting to see a lot of coaches coming out with excuses as to what's going on. They're denying it exists, um, which isn't going to help them in the long run because when this happens to people, and they know it's happening to them, they know they're following the plan and it's not working, uh, it, the coach can say whatever they want. The person's going to know they're full of shit. Um, now I've, I've had a lot of people, I tried to put some information in that first video about how to overcome this problem. Uh, I really want people to prevent it in the first place. Okay, So a lot of what I've been talking about recently is metabolic capacity. All right. I really think metabolic capacity is huge. And I'm not just talking about for people who are dieting for a show, all right? I'm talking about anybody who wants long-term fat loss and maintenance of that fat loss. So when I say uh, metabolic capacity, let me give you an example of what I mean, all right? If we have two people who are like twins, okay? They're genetically identical. Let's just say for, for theory's sake, they're genetically identical and they want to lose a certain amount of fat. They both have the same amount of fat they want to lose. And they're both the same body fat, everything. All your, all your anthropometric measurements are the same. But one of them maintains their weight on 3,100 calories a day, and the other one maintains their weight on 2,100 calories per day. Who is going to have an easier time getting to that fast loss goal? Let's say they've got to lose uh, 20 pounds of fat. It's going to be the person who maintains their body weight on a higher caloric input because they have more metabolic capacity, okay? They have a greater caloric cushion to cut from. Because when we diet down, everyone who's dieted down knows this, that you hit sticking points. Uh, I can, I've worked with over a thousand people in the last eight years. And so I've collected a lot of data points. Only two times out of a thousand people have I ever sent someone a plan and had that plan take them from point A all the way to their end goal. Twice. Okay, though I would consider that statistical outliers. So for most people, what I found statistically is they will stall in fat loss every three to six weeks, I would say. Okay, so let's say you've got somebody who's going to prep for, now it depends on severity of restriction, a lot of things come into it. This is just me giving you general estimations. But I would say they, they will stick every three to six weeks. Some people may be on the higher side of that, some people will be on the lower side of that. So you're going to have to get them to those sticking points. All right, you're going to have to decrease calories and increase cardio some. So you want to start out eating as many calories as you possibly can doing as little cardio as you possibly can while still losing weight, okay? Because that way, when you hit sticking points, you have a greater cushion to cut from. If you hit a sticking, if you start dieting at 1,300 calories and an hour of cardio, and you hit a sticking point, guess what you're going to have to do to get through it? Well, you're going to be 1,100 calories and an hour and a half of cardio. And then when you hit another sticking point, so on and so forth. And that's how you get down to people who are doing two hours of cardio a day, eating 800 calories and cannot lose body fat. Uh, but this starts in the off season, okay? The people I coach, um, a lot of them get sick of me feeding them, okay? Uh, they could say, well, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with where I am. 
I am going to keep pushing calories in. Now I'm doing it very slowly. The biggest difference between how this is between normal quote unquote bulking and how this is done is that you add calories extremely slowly. Okay? Example, somebody who's coming out of a severe caloric restriction who has what I would consider metabolic damage. Let's just take the person who's eating 800 calories a day. I might start off with them adding five grams of carbs per week to their numbers. Five grams of carbs and maybe a gram of fat here and there. And just keep adding those every week. And people will say, oh my God, that, I mean, that takes so long. But the, the fact that it's going slow, if you do that over a year, you're adding 250 grams of carbs to somebody's numbers. That's a significant difference in their metabolism. And for most people, once they get their metabolism out of that really repressed state, you can start making bigger jumps. You can jump up by 10 or 15 grams of carbs, two or three, four grams of fat uh, per week. And so I've, I've had people who were eating under 100 grams of carbs per day, couldn't lose weight. Um, we would work with them for over a year and they'd be up around 350 grams of carbs per day, 400 grams of carbs per day and not gaining weight. I have one gal, uh, Emily Blackburn, she started, she, when we started her reverse, she was eating like 50 grams of carbs a day from a contest prep. Uh, here she sits a year and a half later <clears throat> and she is eating 450 grams of carbs per day and she's four pounds above her stage weight. Uh, you think she's going to have trouble losing that four pounds? I don't think so. Now, she's a, what I would consider somebody who's a very good responder. Not everybody responds that well. But the point being, if you're, if you're trying to do this, if you're trying to increase your metabolic capacity, first off, let's take the somebody who's, who's, who's repressed their metabolism, who's coming out of a long contest prep or fat loss diet or whatever. Start out very conservatively. Um, even if it's just you adding 1% or 2% of calories per week, start out very conservatively. What you'll find is you will not add weight from that. Now you may fluctuate here and there a few weeks, but you, you shouldn't add much weight from that really at all. Now you may end up adding some weight over time, but it shouldn't be any more than maybe a pound a month at the absolute most. What will typically happen is, let's say you add 5 grams of carbs, and a gram of fat in a week. Nothing happens to your weight. Okay, well add again. Nothing happens. All right, well maybe you're getting to the point where you can get more aggressive and you add 10 grams of carbs per week. Nothing happens. And you add 10 grams next week. Okay, well maybe now you get a spike. Maybe your weight jumps up one or two pounds. What I would suggest doing then is just staying put, letting things settle, and what will typically happen is that weight will come back off. Uh, it will settle and come back off and then you slowly start adding again, okay? Um, <clears throat> try not to get too caught up in day-to-day day -day or week-to-week -week weight fluctuations. You're more looking at kind of an overall course of time over a month or over the months. And so for somebody coming out of contest prep or coming out of a long fat loss diet, over a long period of time, you can really get their calories up and, and get them to the point where, you know, they're up at, you know, 250, 300, 350 grams of carbs per day, you know, over 2,000 calories, and they haven't put on, you know, more than five pounds uh, since you started. Um, everybody's different, everybody responds differently, but that's typically what I'm seeing. Um, now, for somebody who's, you know, maybe has a good metabolism, it's not a problem, and they're going to start dieting down, always be trying to push in some more calories, okay? Um, if, you're not, if you're not gaining uh, weight too fast, Put, even if you don't need it, you know, even if, okay, well, I'm, I'm already at 2,500 calories. I'm not metabolically, metabolically damaged. Great. Add another 5 or 10 grams of carbs a week. Just, or another gram or two of fat. Just keep pushing it in. Because what happens is just keep pushing in more calories because the more you do in the off season to improve your metabolic capacity, the easier it is going to be when you diet down. Because I, like I said, that's going to push you through those sticking points. So that's extremely important. Uh, and I did an interview with fatlossboss.com about metabolic capacity. I would recommend you watch it, watch that interview as well. Um, now, one of the things to keep in mind when I talk about metabolic capacity and metabolic damage is when I did the last video, I felt there was also kind of an overreaction. Okay, I gotta be fair. There, there's a, there, there is a 
a lot of people who have this problem. But I also got people emailing me like, oh my god, uh, I'm eating 150 grams of carbs per day, uh, you know, 1900 calories, I'm losing about a pound per week, am I metabolically damaged? No, you're not metabolically damaged. You're you're, you know, you want to be cautious, you want to be careful, but you're not metabolically damaged at that amount of, of intake. Um, I think it created more of a scare uh, in some people than I would have liked. Um, so, no. Uh, the other thing I, I, I saw was that uh, people would associate uh, metabolic damage with uh, adrenal fatigue. Now, adrenal fatigue is still a relatively new term. And to be honest, there is basically no scientific evidence it exists. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, okay? Certainly, I've seen some people with hormonal perturbations that are associated with metabolic issues, all right? But I've seen plenty of people who have totally normal thyroid, totally normal hormonal profile, who are having this issue, who are having metabolic issues. Hormonal issues are not required for this. Okay, you should get your you should get your blood work done. Everybody should get blood work done and check out their hormones just to make sure they're fine. But metabolic damage or metabolic adaptation and adrenal fatigue or other hormonal issues are not the same thing. They're not the same thing. And one of the things I really want people to be cautious of is I see a lot of people going to doctors or naturopaths and being uh, told they have adrenal fatigue and. I had one, uh, one gal who I worked with, for example, um, her doctor told her that she had adrenal fatigue and high cortisol. Um, well, if you have adrenal fatigue, if you're having a low output of your adrenals, you should have low cortisol, not high. Uh, and furthermore, when I actually looked at her blood work, not only was her cortisol not high, it was completely in the normal range and actually a little bit on the low side of the normal range. This person just told her a lie, basically to sell her more stuff. Uh, she also, the, 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 this was actually not a naturopath, but a chiropractor. And again, I go to a chiropractor. There are good chiropractors out there. There are also some hacks, okay? So be careful. Um, but this chiropractor told her also that she had mercury poisoning and that that was why she was also having some issues as well. Well, I asked how they measured the mercury poisoning and they measured it in her hair. Hair is not an accurate analyzer of something like mercury, okay? Hair will tell you when something shouldn't be there. If it's there, will tell, if something should not be there and it's there, then you have a problem. Like if you're talking about arsenic or something like that. Or they use it for marijuana testing because marijuana is not something that occurs in your bloodstream naturally. But you actually have a certain amount of mercury that will be in your body. Um, and so a blood test is really the only suitable way to test for mercury. So basically, this, this chiropractor had her do a test that they knew would come back as positive just to give her something else to sell her. Um, so again, beware of people that have uh, magic solutions, okay? Yes, I can get you ready for your show and we can solve all your metabolic problems and you don't have to stop dieting. Yes, you do. If, you have a metab if you're having metabolic issues like that, this dieting is going to make it worse, okay? There is no way to improve your metabolic rate while you're restricting calories. It's just not going to happen, okay? You need to decide, is my health more, more important to me than some trophy, okay? Think about that for a minute. The other thing is too, sure you can keep doing, doing shows and you might be able to get away with it for a while. Eventually it's gonna catch up with you. And when it does, it usually does bad. I've seen people who are now 40, 50 pounds over show weight. Uh, and can't lose any weight whatsoever because of these issues, okay? Because they didn't, they didn't address the problem early enough. Uh, so, again, be very wary of people who have, you know, kind of magic solutions for you. Uh, I just really want people to be more aware of this issue. Uh, I've seen Joe Donnelly's been sharing my video a lot. Uh, I appreciate that, Joe. Um, I also had some coaches say, well, you know, Lane just made this video so he can get more clients. I'm going to be honest with you. At this point, I am turning 90 to 95% of clients away, of potential clients away. Um, and I actually had 
almost an anxiety attack over whether I should make this second video because I had so many emails uh, from the first video that it was hard for me just to keep up with my work. Um, so please, um, I would really appreciate it unless you're very, very serious about an inquiry. Uh, don't, don't email me about it uh, because I probably won't be able to get to it. Um, for a long time, I really prided myself on being able to answer all my emails. And I, I've probably answered, I estimate, over 300,000 emails in the last 10 years from people who, most of whom weren't clients uh, for free. I just can't maintain that anymore. So I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, but I'm going to continue doing these video logs to try and uh, get people more information on, on how they can help themselves. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems like the more, more free information I put out there, the more uh, people want from you. Uh, so I hope people understand when I say this. Now, if you're very, very serious, uh, you're looking for somebody to help me help you, you can email me and uh, you know I will, I will try and help you. Even if I can't help you, I can refer you to other coaches I trust. Um, other coaches I trust, I don't mind saying it. Um, you know, people like my good friend Ben Escrow at uh, denovonutrition.com, uh, Paul Revelia at prophysique.com. You know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up leaving some people out and feeling really, really bad. But those are, are two of my main guys. Um, I also think that uh, Brooke Erickson is starting to work with people now. She would be good. Um, Ava Cowan, she's starting to work with people now. She would be good. Uh, uh, 3D Muscle Journey, uh, those guys are great. Uh, Dr. Joe Klimzetsky, he's great. Uh, Brian Mellencombe. Uh, so I, if, you, if you are interested, you can't afford me, um, but you're very serious. If you email me, I can get you the names of people who can help you. Um, but please, if it's, if it's a question, please look through the videos again. Please read my articles. Uh, I've likely answered them many times over. But, uh, you know, again, be really careful who you choose for a coach. I cannot emphasize this enough. I am a coach for a living. I make my living coaching people. I will be the first person to tell you that you don't need a coach, okay? A coach is a luxury, okay? You can get to a show without a coach. Now, if you have a good coach, it can make your ride much smoother, okay? It can make it a much more uh, easy experience. Uh, it can take a lot of stress off you. If you hire a bad coach, the worst case scenario is it can really really, really hurt you um, and hurt your metabolism. Please, please do not hire somebody just because they trained everybody else in your gym. Please don't hire somebody just because you see them in a magazine. Please don't hire somebody just because they worked with some, just because they have some big team that goes to all these shows together. I'm not saying everybody in the magazine's bad. I'm not saying everybody who has a big team is bad. But I've seen it a lot. Okay? So please, really be very discriminatory in terms of analyzing what somebody's done, what somebody's philosophies are, understanding that. Uh, ask them hard questions before you hire them. Uh, ask them, you know, what do you think about this, this, this me these metabolic issues? How do you prevent it in your clients? You know, what, what do you do to make sure your clients stay healthy? Um, so I, I really, really encourage people to do that. Um, I, I just, like I said, at this point, I, I have more business than I know what to do with, which I, I'm honored. Um, that, that's an amazing thing for me. Uh, but I don't do these videos to get more clients. I do these videos because I want to help you guys. Um, because I've just seen how many people have had these issues. So please, really, really, really do your research. Work hard in the off season uh, on, a, on, on really maximizing your metabolic capacity. That's Shows are won in the off season and fat loss battles are won in the off season. Okay? Having that metabolic capacity 
makes a huge difference. I'll, I'll leave you with, with kind of one, one final uh, example. Uh, I, I, I had a gal I worked with. Her name is Cheyenne. Uh, very, very awesome client. Awesome. Uh, the first time she came to me, she had worked with somebody previously who had her on a ketogenic diet and whittled her down to 128 pounds. I mean, just tiny um, for her. And when she came to me, she was 172 pounds. She was, she was 35, 30 to 40 pounds over her stage weight. But she was maintaining that body weight on 3,300 calories per day, okay? So she had more body fat than I like for people to start with. But she had a lot of metabolic capacity to work with. We actually were able to get her down to... Uh, stage weight, which was actually about 142 pounds. I have no idea how this other person got her down to 128 pounds because 142 pounds, she was shredded. <laughs> so, uh, again, be careful who you hire. Um, but we got her down to 142 pounds. She lost 30 pounds uh, in, in about 18 weeks. And she never really stuck that badly because she had that metabolic capacity to work with. Okay? Whereas you take her, she had 30 pounds to lose. I would consider her in a better spot in terms of metabolic capacity compared to how much she had to lose than somebody who only has 15 pounds to lose but is maintaining their body weight at 1300 calories. Okay? You have to look at a trade-off between how much fat you have to lose and the metabolic capacity you get back. For example, I'll um, go back to Emily. She put on probably about 4 pounds of body fat um, and, and some muscle too um, in her off season. But I will trade that four pounds of body fat for the thousand, fifteen hundred extra calories she has to work with. I mean, absolutely, I will take that every time. So again, yes, how far over stage weight you get is important. But also, how far you push your metabolic capacity is also important. Do not be one of these people who's in the off-season and your off-season carb intake is 150 grams per day and your calorie intake is 16, 1700. Push it. Give yourself enough time to recover between shows and give yourself time to recover your metabolic capacity. Okay? Um, I'm going to put uh, some links in the description uh, of coaches I recommend. Uh, and I'm also going to put uh, some other links in the description of, of other places you can find me, such as Twitter, Facebook, etc. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this stuff has been useful. Again, I just want to get you guys all this information because, to be quite frank, uh, I'm, I'm sick and tired of these awful, awful coaches doing this. Um, I don't think it's a, a sadistic thing where they're, haha, you know, evil, wanting to hurt people. But just because their intention is not to hurt people does not excuse them from their behavior, okay? If you are an idiot and you hurt somebody or kill somebody, you are still criminally liable in court, okay? And I'm honestly surprised some of these coaches haven't been sued with how badly they've messed people up. So, uh, again, be careful. Work really hard on your metabolic capacity. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe uh, if you like it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.